Hi, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to The Daily Dose. My name is Shoshana Gross. I am the events manager with the Ohio Restaurant Association. And my guest today is Garrett Giozzi. He is the division manager of environmental health with Franklin County Public Health. Welcome, Garrett. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. So today's purpose with everybody getting ready to open patios and dining rooms here in the next um, few days is to just do a quick five um, top questions that uh, you've been getting and that we've been getting at the ORA to try to um, give people a, a sense of um, some final answers on some of these things, at Absolutely. least for how it stands right now. How's that sound? That sounds great. Great. So I'll ask the question and you give us an answer. We're gonna try to do these um, rapid fire. So one minute per question per answer, okay? Sounds great. Here we go. So first question is um, about social distance seating. Um, how much spacing can be between groups? And then for barrier heights, what um, can we use for a barrier? Great, that's a good question. We're getting that quite frequently. Uh, the guidance put out for Restart Ohio says that groups or parties of people need to be kept at least six feet apart. So um, if you and I would go into a restaurant, we could be sat together because we're one party of people, one group. We would need to be separated at least six feet from the next party or group of people. The same thing applies to bars. Uh, bars are open within restaurants. Uh, you can sit at the bar. You would just need to be six feet away from the next party or group of people. If six feet isn't applicable due to the setup of the facility, they can create barriers. So they could install plexiglass panels, uh, wooden barriers. So the thing to keep in mind is, is that these items need to comply with the Ohio Uniform Food Safety Code. So really they need to be smooth, easily cleanable, and non-absorbent. So if you were using wood, for example, you would just need to make sure it's painted or covered with one of those um, surface coverings that are non-absorbent and easily cleanable. Um, we've seen a lot of people want to use shower curtains. Um, while that may meet the definition of the food code, uh, we understand that there are some issues regarding the fire code and building code. So as always, it's a great idea to call your local building department, your fire department, and um, have them answer their questions on whether or not they would permit those um, materials inside your food establishment. And that's a great Oh, sorry. That's a great point, Garrett. Um, with all of these, if you have questions, um, the ORA recommends, and I know that you recommend reaching out to your local health department, to your fire department, to your building um, manager. Just make sure you're in compliance. Absolutely. Everyone is here to help everyone succeed through this time. So definitely reach out to your local health department, your building department, for some final determinations on what you may be installing. Regarding height of barrier, Barriers, this is really um, unique to each restaurant situation. It's dependent on how tall the seat backs are or what the space is set up. So really, if you are standing at a position or sitting in a bench or a booth, um, you would wanna make sure that the height of the barrier is above your head so as not to be able to cross um, you know, straight through the booth or something like that. Another thing to keep in mind of, uh, a lot of restaurants have decorative like wall holes or portholes or viewing for booths across walls. Um, those would need to be closed off as well. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Next on the list are best practices for using PPE. In particular, um, we get a lot of questions about face coverings in the front of house and back of house and then use of gloves. Sure, absolutely. So, as the guidance currently states, face masks, face masks are required for employees. Um, that's front of house and back of house. Um, there is no blanket exception for back of house employees. Uh, we direct people to what the Restart Ohio documents are, and they list some pretty specific exceptions or exemptions for face coverings for employees. 
Um, if you think you have an employee or a position within your facility that would meet one of those exemptions, you would be required to place that in writing um, at the request of the health department. So uh, we understand that people uh, may complain about this or if they see someone may not wearing a face mask, there may be a valid reason for that employee not to have it, but that just needs to be documented. Um, face shields are not uh, a substitute for face masks. The mask needs to cover the nose, the mouth, and the chin. So uh, we've been getting uh, that question a lot, but really um, face masks um, are the best solution. Um, now, what type of face mask? That's the other question. It does yeah. not need to be a fancy, we're not recommending N95 healthcare masks. This can be something as simple as a bandana that you just simply wear to cover your mouth, nose, and chin. So. Great. So everyone should be able to have access to an appropriate face covering. Yeah, absolutely. It does not need to be fancy by any means. That's, the, that's good news. Um, and what about gloves? Yeah, as restaurants begin to reopen and restart, um, you'll see employees not wearing gloves, but that's okay. Um, all restaurants are already required to follow the Ohio Uniform Food Safety Code. And there are very specific tasks that require glove usage, uh, that trigger hand washing before you pl put on gloves. So just know that if you see your cashier or someone checking you out or handing you a bag of food, those employees do not need to be wearing gloves. Um, there's a number that, you know, gloves give people superpowers, super hands, and they can touch <laughs> everything. Uh, so we did really discourage the use of gloves for all employees. Um, restaurant managers, persons in charge, they know when their employees should be wearing gloves and when should they should be washing their hands. Great. So if we're seeing um, restaurant workers, some of them without gloves on, they're still in compliance as long as they're washing their hands frequently um, as, as regulated by the food code. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, very good. Uh, and I just wanted to add, you know, if you have questions, uh, if anyone has questions about what's best practice versus what's mandated, we have written all of these things down, right? We have, um, this is come, come, came out of an advisory group by the governor's office uh, last week. So you can find these um, rules written uh, on our website, the Ohio Restaurant Association and our resources page. Um, Garrett, do you guys have them posted as well? We do, they're on our uh, COVID-19 page. You can link to that, uh, get to that from our website, which is my, FCPH, like my Franklin County Public Health.org. Uh, we have a whole host of um, information and resources and graphics and signage that are all available to uh, um, a wide group of individuals and offices and restaurants. So uh, there is a wealth of information there. Fantastic. Um, okay, so we have two more to go. Um, so the first one is bar areas. Um, so are we allowed to have open bar areas right now? Yes, so uh, starting on the 21st when indoor dining occurs, uh, bars can be open within those restaurants, absolutely. Um, and then, and, and what's best practices? You sort of covered this already associated with bar seating. Is it, is it the same as anything else? It is the same. So it's the same as any sort of counter service or bar seating. Uh, it still needs to comply with all the social distancing requirements. Uh, that are laid forth in the Restart Ohio documents. So if somebody had bar stools that are bolted into the floor, just making sure to make some of those unavailable for appropriate distancing is, is acceptable? Yeah, covering them with a bag or taping them off or putting signs on them that says, you know, do not sit here, or do not use, um, those are all acceptable, absolutely. Great. Um, and then we, um, the last one is signage. So this is an important one, I think. Um, what are some best practices around providing signs to um, customers and employees? Yeah, so the I think the guidelines address this quite well. There are a number of things that need to be posted within the facility. Uh, the best practice, um, all, all restaurants need to have a sign that lists the symptoms of COVID-19 um, in a conspicuous place. The best practice would be to put that on the entrance and the exits of the facility where people are coming in and going. Uh, here at Franklin County, we have created a sign that says, do not enter if you have any of these symptoms. 
So we've sort of taken the liberty of creating that sign. Uh, that's available on our website as well. You can print that off. Uh, we have some additional signage around hand washing, just free, frequent reminders both back of house and front of house on how to effectively wash your hands uh, per the Ohio Food Code. So a lot of good graphics on the website for that as well. Um, so I think that there's a good deal of signage already out there. Um, if you think you want to use your own brand sign or you have corporate guidelines you need to follow, by all means, you can do that. They don't have to be from the health department. Uh, you know, we just make them available to use for everyone. We know that they comply with those requirements, but if you have questions about the signage, really take a look at the Restart Ohio document and that will tell you uh, what needs to be on those signs. Fantastic. So I think there, um, I mean, a big takeaway from this is just there's a wealth of resources out there right now. Make sure that as a restaurant owner, operator, or bar owner, operator, that you're tapping into those resources, utilizing your local health department, utilizing the Ohio Restaurant Association. That's what we're here for. Um, and if this is interesting to you. Um, we are actually going to be doing a more in-depth conversation with Garrett and some other local health department officials. Um, that'll be with our um, Laura Morrison, um, and it will come out sometime next week. We're going to give folks a little bit of time to see what's working. Maybe there um, will be some shifting to language, um, and so we just want to um, give a little bit more time to uh, try it out. And then we will be posting more in-depth FAQ videos for you um, on our Ohio Restaurant Association resource page. Um, and then I just wanted to say thank you so much, Garrett, for taking a few moments uh, this afternoon to speak with me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. And I really encourage you all to go to the coronavirus.ohio.gov website. There's a wealth of information. Best practices are linked there. Uh, check with your local health department for additional signage. Um, we're all in this together and we want you all to exceed, uh, succeed during this time and we're here to make sure that we're providing you with the best information we can. Wonderful. Thanks again and we'll talk soon. Great, thanks. Bye.